Hello, and thank you for listening to the podcast. Do us a solid and uh, give us a positive rating yeah. if that's available where you get your podcast. It helps other people discover us. Yeah, and then you have more people that you can like, when you run into a stranger on the street, you can be like, oh, what do we have in common? You probably listen to Ryder and Lisa Replay. Yeah, a lot of those conversations come up, I bet. Totally, at bus stops and stuff? Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but you said the, there was a bad rating? There was one really bad rating. Mm, I bet I know who that was. Probably one of your ex-girlfriends. Thanks a lot. Why do you got to be so toxic at the end of your relationships, Ryder? I'm actually like pretty good friends with all of my exes. Uh, oh, right. No, that's me. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I bet I know who gave us the poor rating. Who? It's another jealous radio host in the city. I actually don't doubt that because then I went and creeped another local radio station's podcast and the same person was beaking them. Oh, no. Then that means it's somebody in a smaller market who wants to get to Edmonton and wants to just bash all the hosts here in hopes that the bosses see it, fire them, and then they can swoop in and get the job. Okay, enjoy the show, and don't forget to check out our show live tomorrow. It's going to be good. a Halloween special. This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. Now it's time for something that you'll probably forget. It's things Lisa found on the internet. Uh, I love that you're talking to yourself when you say that. Yeah, I was just trying to like <laughs> save a couple seconds because I wasn't ready to be on it. This is really interesting. Vampire bats socially distance from each other when they are sick. <laughs> There, yeah, there's a study done by behavioral ecology, and sick bats will self-isolate. Yeah. They they are probably doing a lot better than us as humans, yeah. to be honest. They get it. Now, I had to look more into this because I'm just fascinated by animals. I love animal facts. Some other animals that do the same are lobsters, monkeys, and fish. So in other words, I can trust all of those (laughs) animals more than my friend Vicky. Correct. Yeah. All right. Halloween themed. Lisa finds things on the internet. Another story. There was a woman who said her strip club inspired Halloween display on her front lawn that features seductively posed skeletons has angered her neighbors. Oh, come on. Get over it. No, there's there's probably children in the area. Children love Halloween displays. Yeah, but like, do they know what a skeleton holding a pole would mean? No, they probably have like skeletons up against each other. Like, No, no. That's in the back room. You don't see that out front. <laughs> it's the backyard display. <laughs> The champagne. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, the Homeowners Association stepped in finally, and they told her she has 30 days to remove the display. And it's like, that's, okay. That's well past Halloween. Like she's probably going to take it down November <laughs> 1st. And if she doesn't, that would be a power move. <laughs> Middle finger to the neighbors. And last but not least, this Halloween, there's going to be a rare blue moon. This only happens every 19 years. Mm. So if you have any wolves in your life, or maybe a werewolf, or maybe you're just going to be dressed up as a werewolf, it's going to be the best time to howl at the moon this Halloween. Well, that's where the saying once in a blue moon comes, because it's so rare. And right. I actually read up on this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Apparently, you're supposed to let go of something that's really been irking you. Okay. Let it go, and then manifest something you've really been wanting. Right. Because rarity is essential with those things. Apparently, Halloween night uh-huh. and a blue moon. It's a full is, moon. It's like the most rare combination you can get. Should be interesting. What are you going to let go? My like, pants, and then there'll be a white moon as well. <laughs> Imagine being such a fan of an artist that your Twitter account's handle is their name. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, I'm that. Who's the person? At Enya fan. You know that. <laughs> Okay, did you know that Enya like lives in a castle with like 20 cats now? I heard that somewhere. Anyway, there is a, a girl named Theodora and she is the biggest Harry Styles fan. <sighs> okay, move over. He's my boyfriend. But anyway, apparently his car broke down on her street, but she wasn't home at the time. And her dad's friend was walking and saw him and was like, oh, you can come wait at my buddy's house. Come on in. Let's grab a cup of tea together. I feel like um, in Britain and London and places like that, people just go into their friends' houses. Nobody locks their door. Okay. They kind of just invite themselves in. So the story does, uh, it makes sense to me. So he's chilling there, waiting for help to come with his car. 
Theodora never shows up. So he leaves her a note. He says, I'm devastated that we missed each other. Looking forward to meeting you soon. Treat people with kindness. All my love, Harry. P.S. I fed your fish. And then he continued by adding, tell your dad to get in touch with me and I'll see you at one of my shows. And there's photos of him feeding her fish in her bedroom. I would be beside myself probably that be I mad. missed out. Yeah, exactly. But still, what a wonderful story. I love him. Tell me something good. My story is about a group of parents that wanted to show some appreciation for the teachers and staff at their kids' school, which, understandably so, uh, this year is very unique and trying on a lot of teachers. So they lined up to get a food truck on uh, Wednesday. Okay. This is a couple weeks ago for all the teachers and staff. The parents all chipped in money. That's awesome. And it went so well and it was so appreciated that they hired the truck back for every Wednesday for the next foreseeable future. And supporting local too. I love that. Yeah. Tell me something good. Wedding Crashers. Rumored to have a sequel in the works. Check this out. Vince Vaughn talking about it. You know, funny enough, we just recently talked more seriously about a sequel. There's a really good idea um, that David came up with. And we've actually been talking, you know, in a much more serious way about about doing a, a second story with those same characters. All right. So there there you have it. One of the best comedies of all time. Speaking of Vince Vaughn, have you ever Googled young Vince Vaughn? Smoke show? Did you know he's married to a woman from, like, Lac La Biche? No, she's from Cal... Isn't she from Calgary? Well, she was originally from Lac La Biche. Yeah, that's pretty fascinating. Mm. It's just like um, Zach Galifianakis. His wife, girlfriend, is from Edmonton. Berta. Berta girls. Oh, yeah. Can't blame them. The best kind. Uh, So we wanted to go through our top five comedies of all time and ask you what your favorite is. 780-784-7107. Okay, and... Uh, A lot of texts rolling in saying you definitely said stepbrothers. Oh, Oops. (laughs) Oops. <laughs> uh, we got to fact check that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I can go back. No problem. No, it's all good. Okay. Apologies. Okay. So we both came up with our top five list. Feel free to judge us, or maybe it'll make you appreciate us and our sense of humor more. Who knows? Whatever. Fire away. Number five for you. Number five for me is Dumb and Dumber. Solid. Number four, Wayne's World. Mm-hmm. A gun rack. Number three, Bridesmaids. Oh, yeah. You do? It's amazing how many of these (laughs) top-notch comedies you kind of forget about. (gasps) Number two, Mean Girls. All right. So good. And keep in mind, these are all movies that you can quote. It's so good. Endlessly, yeah. And in first place, this might shock some people. Scary movie. All right. I love it. One time I yelled, we hit a boot. And some guy across the street on White Ave yelled, where's the foot? I was like, that's my husband. We are meant to be together. So again, just spit fire mine quickly. Dumb and Dumber, Wayne's World, Bridesmaids, Mean Girls, and Scary Movie. My top three all have women as the lead role. That's what's up. Uh, Super Bad 5, Tommy Boy 4, Airplane 3, Best in Show 2, and Happy Gilmore 1 for me. Uh, number one was almost Titanic, but I ended up going with Happy Gilmore. Titanic? Yeah. There's some really funny parts. No, in that. there aren't. <laughs> I'm just I kidding. hate that. I hope you're ready to get scared. And now, here's another terrifying episode of Terror Tales. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Thank you for all the submissions over the last couple weeks as we continue to scare the crap out of people. My daughter loves this segment. Yeah, tomorrow for like our Halloween show, we're going to have more than one terror tale. So be listening all morning. And we already got a submission from Shane. We're going to call him later on today and pre-record it for you Mm because it is next level scary. I uh, showed my daughter a couple of the... Uh, terror tales from on our podcast in the past couple of days, uh-huh. and then she like held my hand the entire time uh-huh. we walked and was like looking around right. when we walked the dog. So she likes it, but she is very scared of these stories. So are we, to be honest? Yeah, you can find all of them because we've been doing this for like two weeks. Ryder and Lisa replay is where you can find our podcast. This one from Mike. One night when I was maybe ten or twelve years old, I had trouble falling asleep. My bedroom was the entire top floor of our house, with my bed and such being on the left side and storage closets in a play area on the right. I was lying in bed when I heard a noise from the other side of the room and saw a rocking horse begin to rock. Oh, no. 
It was just sitting outside one of the storage closet doors. It then rocked its way halfway no. across the room Mm-mm. and stopped dead under the ceiling light. What? At this point, I was freaking out and just buried my head under my blankets and never peeked out again until morning. When I woke up, the rocking horse was still in the middle of my room, and I got in a lot of trouble from my parents for being up and out of bed playing with my toys well past my bedtime. Their bedroom was directly below the storage closet play area. He wasn't up playing. That I never even walked to that (laughs) side of the room. I heard creaking, shuffling from across the room, and apparently so did my parents. Don't like that story. Also, is this kid in the attic? Well, is this like another? I had a house like this okay. once, and the whole top <laughs> floor was the bedroom. There was even like a little oh. ensuite up there. It was pretty awesome, actually. Creepy though. Well, new feature coming to Tinder. Woo! Woo! We love an update. <laughs> uh, apparently, vid chat is a thing. Oh yeah, no. So this, like it's never going to happen. First of all, most people don't look like their pictures anymore. Right. This is a good way to avoid catfishing. But. Yeah. But most of the time when you're messaging, you're not looking your best. Like, yeah, of course you dress up for a nice first date. Mm-hmm. But I guess with 2020 being a thing. Yeah. You could get dressed up for once sure. Once in a while, you're just staying in the house. But like you have a little date with mm-hmm. someone it's safer. Yeah, I guess you're right. It could work out, but I don't see this um, feature lasting long. I remember you telling me something that was quite surprising years ago <laughs> when I was talking to you about uh, just ladies and like flirty chatting. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, are girls into it? Like, I, I get mixed reactions no. if it's going well. I want to know if there's anyone listening that agrees with me. Whenever that does shake down and they're like, what are you wearing? You lie. Like you completely put on this facade that everything is like so sexy and great. But really, you're sitting on your couch, haven't showered in four days. You're eating a foot long and you're watching the Mindy <laughs> Project. <laughs> like, like you're like, oh, yeah. the pickles that fall out yeah, off and your like, shirt. They're waiting, like anticipating text back. And you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. And then like you pick, pick up your phone and you'll be like, yeah, yeah, this, 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 like. Emoji, emoji, and then you like throw your phone and get back to what you were doing before. <laughs> Play 107. Getting hooked up to the dog shaw caller and trying to perform a Halloween song. I feel like I know this one okay, but okay is usually not good enough. You got to be really in character, okay? No, that has nothing to do with yes. it. Yes. No, because I'll you said that. I'll shock you if you don't get into no, character. No, that's not allowed. I'm going anti-character now. I'm going to be really depressed while I sing. So Ryder is not allowed to see any lyrics. He is hooked up to the dog shot collar. Do not try this at home. It doesn't hurt that much. Yeah. It's just like a little pinch. How much do you have it turned up there? Five. No, that's significant. Okay, I'll turn down to four. Still. Good luck. That's the sound of the dog shot collar, by the way, in the background. (laughs) I was walking in the lab late one night, and when my eyes beheld an eerie sight, for my monster from his living it out, and suddenly, to my surprise, he did the mash. Get into character. The monster mash. The monster mash. (laughs) It was a great (laughs) expression. The monster mash. (laughs) It was kind of fun. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> okay. Get into it! Well, no! Tis the sizz Ow. to be spooky. That hurt. Play 107. All right, it's the 29th of October. Ryder, we need to know how is Sober October going for you? You took one day off. <laughs> yes, Thanksgiving Sunday. <laughs> I got into the wine yeah. at dinner and then the whiskey after. And it hit you hard. Yeah. I think my tolerance, my tolerance is low. Even also, I think I drank more wine than I thought at dinner. That can happen when other yeah. people are filling up your mm-hmm. wine glass. It just goes. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so other than that, it's been good. Although, you know, when you go on a road trip, if it's like 12 hours, the first two hours fly by. The next two hours, you know, we're pretty good. Then you take a break, as I did right in the middle. And then... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, a little bit longer. And then the last like hour of the trip. It's the worst. Seems so long. And didn't you say that there were more weekends in October than usual? Yes, I took I uh, picked a terrible month. It like started off on a weekend, ends on a weekend. 31 days, five weekends. Yeah. So it's good though. That's what I wanted was just uh, to lose a little weight because I carry that beer. Yourself? And it's nice to just have a break. Yeah. Like my dreams are firing differently and um, just overall feel pretty good. So, yeah, it's going good. I, I like to do this. I did this. This is my second month that I've done it. And I think it's just a nice refresh. Like, like you hit refresh on your body, also, on your liver. It's probably a good reminder to be like, hey, I don't depend on this. Yeah, yeah. It's also <laughs> refreshing. To be like, yep, I got this. You've got this. Are you going to drink on the 31st? At midnight. <laughs> Halloween decor, not um, as significant this year as I thought it would be. I just figured people would be decorating more because they don't have as much to do otherwise. Yeah, but some people go all out yeah. still every year. It doesn't matter what's going on. They're so passionate about Halloween. And it's gotten some people in trouble. Some Halloween decoration is so well done that multiple people have 911 called on their property mm. because they think it's a real crime scene. I've heard of this before. And yeah, another story breaking about that happening uh, this week with numerous police calls. Yeah, like they don't have this guy was quoted when he was called and interviewed by um, a radio or sorry, a local TV station. And he said, I didn't want to do lights and fog machines or anything campy that would really freak people out by walking by in the dark. So instead, I just like whipped up some dummies and then slung 20 gallons of fake blood all over. This guy lives in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, no, make I it fun, not actually r realistic. I had a buddy whose dad put up a mannequin as if he was putting up Christmas lights and fell off the roof. And so he was just dangling. That's funny. And like... 20 people <laughs> stopped to help in, in over the month span. So eventually he had to take it down because he felt bad. Mannequins but, look like real yeah. humans now. Here's another tip. If you're planning on committing multiple murders, no, just spread them out like it's Halloween, Halloween decorations. It'll just give you an extra couple days to figure out what to do with the bodies. I don't like this advice. No, it's the 90s and 9 and it continues with George Michael. I was kidding. Play 107. Perspective, very important. Uh, I think the older I get, the more I realize how I look at something is almost as important as what I'm looking at. Okay, can you explain that a bit more? Like, what are you talking about specifically right now? Well, I just think, like, taking a positive approach uh, when things are thrown at you, when curveballs are thrown at you, can go a long way. And especially when talking with kids, because we really set the tone for them on what reality is, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, you could spark anxiety in a child without realizing it just by saying one little comment. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and it's it sits with kids. So yeah. I just came across something that I, I wanted to read that I found very profound. The past six-plus months, I've heard the phrase, our kids have already lost so much countless times, and I'm over it. It's a little pathetic, in my opinion, that as adults, we are perpetuating the victim mentality for our kids instead of teaching them the art of grit and pivoting in unexpected and challenging times. Okay. Using a current issue as an example, are kids really going to suffer if they don't go trick-or-treating? No, but they will if we, the adults, model it as a loss mindset. Mm. What if instead families looked at it as a way to plan a really fun evening, maybe yep. doing an art project, bobbing for apples and mixing bowls, packaging up sweet treats to drop uh, off for neighbors, creating a spooky themed meal together. I assure you, if we, the adults, started to <laughs> find the opportunity, instead of inflating the perceived losses, we may actually find that we have opportunities to create lasting memories for our children. Lighter and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.